Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Michaela. And we are currently about 50% through an RV12 IS build here in the UK. Uh, we get a lot of people on the forums, you know, we see them asking, where do you get your kit from? How much room do you need? What's it like to put it together in the UK? Is there support? And all this other stuff. So we thought we'd actually start to document some of this process. And I believe we are one of the first to be building an RV12 IS, mm -hmm. uh, the injection model in this country. Um, so yeah, so whilst we're on some downtime waiting for our other parts of our, our kit to arrive, which is the Avionics Power Plant and Finishing Kit, we thought we'd do a couple of videos about the, you know, the tools, the equipment, and the things you're going to need when putting one of these together. Stay tuned. One thing we see a lot on the groups, especially the vans, you know, the main builder groups, uh, is about the tooling you need to build one of these things. Now, we bought the majority of our kit from Cleveland Tools in America, and it was excellent. They do a complete kit. Um, I'll show you through some of the stuff you use when you put one of these together. Uh, you know, as I say, you have a very comprehensive sort of hand tool set from them. Um, and we'll go through you know, the majority of the bits and bobs. So one thing you're going to use a lot of is Clicos. And I think you get one pair of Clico pliers with the VAT, with the uh, Cleveland toolkit. Worth getting a couple um, because you know you can have your other half help you or whatever kids join in, etc. And some get some of these as well, some of these little Clico clamps. They're really handy for holding panels together. So from Cleveland, you do get all your one eight Clicos, and we've got loads more uh, than just this lot. You get your um, the smaller Clicos for other bits and bobs. And then probably the most important tool you get from Cleveland Tool is their dimpler. So this is the only um, squeezing tool you'll need for the entire aircraft this plus their selection of dimples and uh, cups for the different rivet types is all you need uh, a good idea is to stick it into a a bit of wood like that we started off with everything in their little bags and it was a nightmare fishing through so we've made a little tray up uh, with all the different dimples in so we know where to find everything um, the other thing you're going to need is one of these uh, and also you don't get this in the kit and this is actually from a chap, uh, an engineer kind of gave this to us, who used to work on the Red Arrows. There's a very good hand squeezer you need. You do get from them an air uh, riveter, so you'll need to get yourself a, you know, a reasonable small compressor for that. And the other thing you get is all the drill bits you're going to need. So again, make yourself a block. Uh, you're going to be using the 30s, the 40s a lot, uh, and sometimes the 12s as well. Uh, but you will need all of these throughout the course of the build. Um, you also use these, which again come with the kit, and these are used for fluting ribs to make them straight from when they've been pressed out, and also for breaking the edges of panels as well. And it's a good idea to wrap it in a bit of masking tape to make them like soft jaws. That's a good idea to do. The other bit of kit, which I highly recommend, which doesn't come in the kit, and I can't remember where I got this from, um, but there's the part number, so you can Google it, is a rivet removal tool. This thing is excellent. It lets you drill the rivets out first time, because you will make mistakes. And it's so much better than just using a you know a thirty drill and, and hoping. Uh, it's, it's it's excellent, truly excellent. Uh, what else can we cut? Oh yeah, uh, another very important bit of kit is a marker pen because when you're cutting panels up and everything, you're going to want to mark everything down. Um, you know which what the part number is in the manual, so you can relate to it. Because when you break a big part number into multiple sections, it's important to write down what they are. As Michaela learned when she cut up a load of bits and didn't label them. And on top of that. Uh, I would say it's also quite important to get yourself some decent storage. So I just got some Lindy bins, stuck them on the wall. Uh, and as you're using different bits, label up, you know, bits that you're not quite going to use yet. Leave them up, up out of the way. And when you need them, you can get to them. The other thing you get is about, I think it's 12 or 15,000 rivets um, in a big box. And we're now running out, which is great. And one thing I would strongly advise is don't use a big box and leave it on the wing or wherever you're working. Because if you knock it on the floor, they're everywhere. So what we do is use a smaller pot and just use that for your rivets and you count them in and out. And the other thing, one of the first things you make when you start the build is this. You make a little angular rivet tool so you can put rivets against edges and, and still press the head down nicely and get your rivet gun in there. Very good bit of kit. Um, the other thing, we in the UK, um, we have to prime everything because of our salt air. And so what we do is we prime everything and we also use this stuff which is is a replacement of Duralac and I get this from LAS Aerospace and it's called, uh, J, I think it's like JC, yeah, JC5A compound and you have to buy that little gun because it doesn't fit a normal gun unfortunately. Um, so you smear that on all of your joints between your rivet lines, popsicle stick to put it on, smear it in. Uh, the other thing, lots and lots of scotch Bright. you're going to use loads of this prepping everything. Um, what else? Ah, belt sander, cheap screw fix job. Brilliant uh, for getting uh, sorry, Amazon actually that one for doing all of the uh, taking all the edges off the panels and stuff like that. You're also going to need a bandsaw in 
can do it by hand, but again, you know, for I think this was 120 quid from Screwfix, it's brilliant for breaking the smaller pieces up. And also a bench, um, oh, what do we call it? A bench, a bench, a bench wheel. And on this one, you get a 3M Scotch Bright wheel, and you can use that to really quickly take the edges off of ribs and stuff. Uh, the other thing you may find you need is, or you will use, is a counter sinking kit. And this comes again with the Cleveland stuff. Uh, so you get this really cool tool uh, which you set up. So it's a machine counter sinking tool. So you can set your depths correctly for counter sinking. And again, that comes with the Cleveland kit. So another thing with putting these together is, especially in the UK, is priming the panels. Now we actually started with a spray booth. So we actually made our own sort of drop down spray booth with some builder tarps and some PVC pipe rolled up. We can drop that down and we've got a door there for ventilation. We can actually prime stuff. And we started with the uh, Stuart series um, water-based primer, but didn't really get on with it too well. And I spoke to another chap who's built, or Graham, who actually been helping quite a lot with this, uh, who's built three RVs. And he said, you know, rapid etch, etch primer, really. So we've been can priming everything. Um, so we scotch it all up, uh, take it all off with tack rags, take off the you know oils and fingerprints, degrease, and then we just use some, some rapid etch and probably got through about 30 cans of this, which includes everything up to this point. So the wings, the inner wing skins, all of the parts of the fuselage, the empennage, everything to this point. Pretty much all the metal work of the, of the aircraft, priming, done with uh, about 30 cans of rapid etch. And we just get this from uh, a local place to us called Rainbow Paints. But any, any sort of decent rapid etch primer will do the job. Um, Another uh, range of equipment you're going to need when you start doing these aluminium hard pipes uh, is some decent pipe flaring and bending kit. Uh, luckily I've got a very handy mate of mine called Neil who has sorted out with some, uh, some decent kit for doing this. Uh, he didn't provide this, this is cheap Chinese stuff off Amazon, this one, uh, but it's just a standard pipe bender which is, which is proven very well. Uh, but one thing that is important is a decent pipe flaring kit. So you need a 37 degree SAE pipe flarer and this one uh, made by Rigid Tools actually has, is eccentric so it rolls the flare rather than presses it which for the aluminium is really important it stops it tearing the other thing you're going to need is some loctite thread seal which you have to get and some loctite thread clean as well so i'll show you the numbers for that so it's loctite 577 for the sealant and then loctite 7063 for the cleaner and if you do know if you do know a handy person like neil you get some quite tight bends you've got to get around this so neil actually turned this out for me on the lathe um, which we can screw in uh, to the AN fitting on the end to hold the pipe to form it because you need to put the, the, the fittings on before you form the end. So this is very handy to use uh, to do that. Very handy bit of kit. It's a bit of a aluminium bar with an AN thread. So one thing that we found quite important when building these, the first kit we were working out of like bag numbers and stuff um, because all of the parts come in individual bags or they come in like groups of bags. And what happens is the user manual actually calls it out by part number. So, for example, it might say uh, here, if you kind of look at this, it might say here, um, use this washer, NAS, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. So what we actually did was break all of the bags down and place them all into actual trays detailing what the part numbers are. And it's made it a hell of a lot easier to actually assemble. So you can see when you come to, to pick the parts, for example, this is part of the flap on unit that we've built, you can see what a standard sort of page of instructions look like. You're picking the parts, uh, there might be some preparation to the aluminium to do up here, you can see we've got to cut this in half and, uh, and remove the hatched area. And then you actually build the flapper on module up itself, stick it all together, use the parts called out, and that's a complete assembled unit there. So, you know, the instructions are all very much like this, and you can see how the, the kit goes together. So you have all the, the metal work and all the parts and you build it in stages like that. It's basically a big Meccano set, only you're using pop rivets rather than nuts and bolts for most of the stuff. Uh, but now we've got decided you know, to sort of video some of the progress. We'll actually put some various videos as we do different bits, because as I say, with the IS being quite unique and quite rare in this country, uh, we think it's a good idea to sort of document some of the build process. So we hope that's helped you guys work out what tools and equipment you might need to build an RV12. And we also have a Facebook page where we're going to be documenting a lot more. With this sort of downtime, the COVID-19 stuff, we've decided to sort of do a few more videos of the build, help people out that are doing it as well. Our Facebook page will link uh, down below in the description. Uh, be sure to join on there and, of course, subscribe and you'll get regular video updates and stuff from us as the build progresses. Thanks ever so much. Bye.